I'm Mark Gilbert here. Thanks for clicking in. This video is entitled, You and Your Mind. It's part of a series of videos we're doing based on the book, The Basic Ideas of Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And like all the videos on this channel, they're designed to give you some tools and ideas for assisting with our spiritual evolution. Ernest Holmes was a 20th century mystic and philosopher who studied philosophy, science, and the various religions and created a philosophy called the Science of Mind, which he first wrote about over a hundred years ago. His most famous book is a book called The Science of Mind, published in the 1930s. Ernest died in 1960, but shortly before his death, in 1957, he published, as part of an annual edition of the Science of Mind magazine, a short volume designed to lay out the basic teachings of the Science of Mind. In fact, this was one of the first books when I first started uh, studying the philosophy that I purchased and read, and it's a great introduction to the philosophy itself. Now, in this series of videos, we're going to be going through the book in order of the chapters. We'll be looking at the very first chapter in this particular video, and then in subsequent videos we'll be covering the content in later chapters. If you're looking for one video that covers all of the concepts of the science of mind, I do have a, a video that's listed in the show description below, which is about a 10-minute video covering, in my words, the key concepts of science of mind all in, in one sitting. However, in this series of videos, what I want to do is take you through this book and go into a little more detail on each of the concepts of the chapters, so that by looking at these particular videos and by supplementing by reading the book if you, if you like, or going to discussion uh, classes or things of that nature, you can get a good handle on the key concepts that are in this philosophy. As I've mentioned in some of my other uh, videos, there are about four or five things that have been life-changing for me. I think when I first found uh, the work of Robert Ornstein and his split brain theory, the uh, Maslow's hierarchy, uh, uh, science of mind, uh, integral theory, Ken Wilber's work, and spiral dynamics, these are probably some of the key concepts that have really melded and shaped my ideas around our spiritual evolution. And that's why you'll notice the content of these threads uh, in a lot of the videos that I produce. But let's get into the book, the, science, the Basic Ideas of Science of Mind. There's also a link to, to the book in the show description as well. I encourage you to pick up a copy of it. So let's get into the book. The one-page introduction begins like this. The average man or woman of today feels the need of God in everyday life. An idea of God so rational that it appeals to the scientific mind of the modern person and enables him to see his way clearly in a universe which is run according to law and order. What Holmes is acknowledging right out of the gate in this short book is that we all desire some expansive new idea of what God is, a God that absorbs and incorporates the findings of science. There is a vision that we carry around, a picture that we carry around when we hear the word God that has been drilled into us. And I'm inviting you as you explore Science of Mind to set that old myth of God, the old man in the sky, the God that was painted on, by Michelangelo on the Sistine Chapel's ceiling. That vision that we carry around with that term, the one that many people when they say, I don't believe in God, that's the type of God that they're discounting or disbelieving in. I want you to set that aside, because what God is in the teachings of science of mind is something more expansive, and we'll get into that in just a second. The first chapter of the book, entitled You and Your Mind, acknowledges that we all are looking for experiences and success and happiness that fulfill our lives. As he writes, whatever achievement or happiness may mean to you, you desire a larger amount of it, a closer affiliation with it, the ability to control your experiences and have them result in happiness, prosperity, and success lies in your own mind and in the way you use it. Let us sum it up this way. My thought is in control of my experience, and I can direct my thinking. That is the key concept of the science of mind, and built into that is a couple of things we need to unpack. 
One is when we talk about mind, there is another common meaning that we carry around. Mind, for many people, especially uh, people who are scientific materialists, tend to think mind and brain are one thing. So that is so ingrained in us that we walk around when we hear the word mind, we think of this body of thoughts and memories and the personality and all of our consciousness that is contained where we think is in the brain and the skull of our heads that we walk around with each day. But what Holmes is getting at here is that mind is, is something greater than that. And that, if, and that through that power of the mind, we can control our own thoughts. He's also telling us that we carry around in us a sense of victim consciousness. That we tend to think that the world is done to us. And we tend to think that everything that goes on in our lives, whether it is the status of our relationships, our job, our careers, our income levels, our experiences in life, we're subject to the whims and, and outside influences of things that are going on in this material world and that they are driving our happiness. And happiness is whether we can get more of stuff in this material world to, to work to our favor, to the way that we want it to be. But, he says, we can control those worldly events, and we can control it through the power of our thoughts. I mentioned a minute ago spiral dynamics, and I've done a lot of videos on spiral dynamics and world views. It's interesting that on page two of this book, Holmes gets into the fact that no matter what your viewpoint is, what your underlying belief about life is, you can benefit from the philosophy of science of mind in applying the tools that he teaches in this book in your life. He says you can come from a typical Christian perspective, which from a spiral dynamics is the, the blue traditional worldview, or you can come from a scientific materialistic uh, viewpoint of life, the orange viewpoint in uh, spiral dynamics, or you can be somebody who has transcended uh, both the ra rational scientific and the religious center. You're looking for something greater and grander that, it, it, that transcends both of those, the green and even integral levels of, of spiral dynamics. No matter where you are on the evolutionary arc of moving through these worldviews, there's something in the science of mind that can benefit your life. And there, science of mind is not looking to displace any of these viewpoints in your life Although it's been my experience that no matter what viewpoint you came to Science of Mind with, you typically, if you practice it, you will find your life and your consciousness evolving, and your old viewpoints will tend to be absorbed into a new viewpoint, a new expanded vision of what life is about. So after that, Holmes comes right back to the key concept of expanding your idea about what God is. He writes the following, in the field of physical science, it's been proved that absolutely everything can be scientifically reduced to one ultimate invisible essence, something which cannot be contacted by the physical senses. It is therefore only reasonable to say that originally everything must have and still does come from it. According to one's way of thinking, different names are given to it. Those names include energy, principle, universal intelligence, universal mind, consciousness, spirit, God. He says, for our purpose, it doesn't matter what of these names we use, but let's call it mind. And he uses mind with a capital M. And in fact, whenever you're reading Holmes and you find any words capitalized, such as God or spirit or universal mind or the thing itself, what he's trying to get you to recognize is this invisible essence that transcends everything and permeates everything. That the very existence of everything in this universe is created by this invisible essence, by whatever word we wish to give it. He calls it mind. And so when we talk about the science of mind, we're really talking about the science of God or the science of spirit or the science of consciousness, all with the big capital letter in front of those words. Meaning, the big essence of it that transcends and it's part of the characteristics and, and unifying force of the universe. What Holmes wants us to realize is that we are swimming and living and having our very being in an ocean of universal mind or mind energy. He uses the concept of Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, 
where energy is on one side of the equation and mass is on the other to reflect that at the basic essence of this principle is a recognition that the world of form, i.e. mass, comes from the world of non-form, that is energy. That there's a continuous flow from energy into mass and mass back into energy. The world of the manifest form back into the formless. And that all of this is part of a oneness, an isness, an aspect of life where everything is connected. We live in that. Our individual uses of our mind are in that. Our bodies are a part of that. We live in a flow in this mind, but we also, as part of being in this mind, have the ability to tap into the creative aspect of the one. This universal mind that which has created everything and is through the world of non-form, creating all of the world of form, that power that creates the world of form that is part of the universal mind is in us and that we can tap into it. Here's how he writes that. He says, we were taught the omnipresence of God, universal mind, and also that we were made in his image and likeness. So we arrive at the conclusion that we too, at our level, possess a creativity similar to that of the universal mind. We create in our experience whatever we choose, health, happiness, prosperity, employment, any good thing we need. Through the process of our constructive thought, through which the unlimited creativity of mind acts, giving from to our desired objective. You are a vital part of this harmonious universe. You can create whatever it is you want through the power of directed thought. The question then becomes, how do you do this? To answer that question, Holmes writes, you avail yourself of the creative action of mind through what you believe. And in fact, most of the following chapters, which we'll cover in later videos, get into the practical aspects of creating that belief within you, belief about health and prosperity and abundance and all things that you wish to manifest within your life. But when someone first hears this, that the power of my thoughts and the power of my beliefs, they're going to tap into an unseen source that is permeating everything and that I can tap into it and use it for my own ability. When you first hear that, a part of you questions it. A part of you says it's different from my experience of life. Again, it gets back into that victimhood we talked about a few moments ago where we think the world is being done to us. And we have plenty of situations where we can recall where we thought something and thought something and it didn't manifest into our life. The key is belief. And we'll be speaking in more on that in later videos. But, but I want you to hold that thought that it's not just thinking something, saying something, repeating something, creating a vision board or all of the techniques that might have been taught in the movie The Secret that many of you are probably familiar with. But it's to really get at the essence of your consciousness in both your awareness and in your subconscious a deep-seated belief in something, and when you can move yourself to a, spa a state of truly believing it, then you're going to be tapping into that creative power and manifesting what it is that you desire. Finally, Holmes concludes this first short chapter of this brief book with a chart, a chart outlining the flow of this universal mind. The chart which looks like this has a circle with a circle inside it. At the very inside part is you. And you are surrounded by this divine mind's three aspects. The first aspect is its conscious mind, where it has the power to direct thought, to consciously change thought. Secondly is that aspect of universal mind that acts on thought and creates through it. And the third is the manifest or physical world, the source of the creation. But you are at the center of this, immersed in all three aspects of the divine. So what I'm inviting you to consider as we go along this path of exploring the science of mind is for you to realize that your life, you as an individual, are floating in an ocean of divine energy. That there is this universal mind that permeates everything in 
the universal mind includes a conscious aspect where you can consciously choose your thoughts. It has a creative aspect where it acts upon our thoughts to create our world. And this world of form, this world of our bodies, our brains, the, the manifest world around us is also part of the universal mind. And that there is a continuous flow from the world of the physical to the world of the non-physical. And by the power of our thoughts, we're able to manifest and create into our physical lives the lives we desire. In summary, there's four final points at the very end of the chapter that Holmes writes. He says for us to remember these. Everything is mind, and you are therefore a part of it. Two, mind responds and produces according to your believing thought. Three, you have the right and power to think what you want to think. Therefore, you may create desired good conditions for yourself and others. And four, you control your own good and may transform your life into an experience of happiness, health, and prosperity. We'll look at the details on how to do that in later videos where we're covering more of this short little book. But for this video, I want you to just to begin to change the process of reflecting upon what God is. God's not the old man in the sky. God is a universal mind that permeates everything in both the world of non-form and the world of form. And I want you to change the idea of mind. Mind is not this concept of my thoughts and memories within my skull, but that the mind that I have within me is actually part of a larger and greater mind. Imagine it like an ocean flowing through you and that you are part of that. The ocean is in you, but you're not the entire ocean. And you'll start to get the idea that you're living in this universe of flow, that you are a being who is constantly becoming. And you're becoming through your beliefs and your ability to creatively use the power of thought. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. There's a similar video right here next to my face if you want to click on it. Also, if you want to get notifications of future videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the bottom left-hand corner. If you'd like to contact me, email me at the address on the screen or drop me a comment in the comment field below on YouTube. Thanks.